it's a beautiful day and you want to roll down the windows. Okay, am I supposed to be serious about well, this? Well, just halfway goofy, not totally goofy. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Goodness sakes, Spielberg, give me a little more direction here. <laughs> oh, what a nice day it is, Dad. Can I roll the window down? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay, why not? Tell me more. <laughs> well, because I'm not sure we have enough energy to roll down the windows. You know, this car is slicker than snot on a glass doorknob. <laughs> this car's really slick, you know. Mm -hmm. The Model S is the lowest coefficient of drag car on the planet, and this thing's just barely higher than that. And so, I'm afraid that if we roll down the windows, it'll cause so much extra drag, we won't have enough power to get to where we're going. Okay, how would you suggest we test this? Uh, I don't know, some sort of control. Hey, that's a good idea, actually. Why don't we pick, since this thing has an energy display, that tells you what your average energy use is over the last five miles. Why don't we pick a five mile stretch of road and go in the same directions with the windows down and with the windows up, with the air conditioner. Seems like a solid middle school experiment. Does it? Yeah. It's not real scientific, but it'll give us some sort of practical information. You want to place your bets? Um, on how what? I think, uh, do you think it's going to be more efficient to keep the windows up and the AC on? Because remember, Tesla has a really efficient AC. They're actually talking about going into the heat pump business themselves. Um, so, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Wind uh, windows up AC, windows down, and no AC. I think windows down would cause a significantly more loss of efficiency than windows up with the AC on. I tend to think so, too. Okay, this is the energy screen for the five mile run where we went 50 miles an hour. The adaptive cruise kept us at 50 the whole time and auto steer kept us on the road. Um, there was this nice little pole down here that I could use to synchronize between the two screens. So in a second, we'll take a peek at the window down screen, but this is the window up screen and it shows the average energy over the last five miles. Let's bring in the window down screen. Now, there's a couple things to notice here besides the weird points in the graph and how one graph is smoother than the other and the other's more pointy and jagged. I I don't know what to make of that. Maybe that's when the AC came on. Um, I'm not sure. But the interesting thing to note is the average over the five mile period for both conditions was the same. But I got looking at this and you see the offset here. Well, that's because the it updates its numbers every seven seconds. We've got numbers updating about three sec, two and a half to three seconds apart, which is a, like 180 to 200 feet difference in the actual track that the car went. So that got me curious enough to look ahead and see what the numbers would be. And so here are what the numbers are remember they're updated every seven seconds for the entirety of the trip so it's the average over the last five miles here's what the numbers look like with the window up condition and as you see here there's a plateau where they're pretty much the same so i was hoping when i would bring the numbers up for the windows down that we'd also have a plateau here's the numbers for the windows down condition and we do have that plateau and what's interesting <laughs> is windows down used less energy. It's almost 2% more efficient to drive with the windows down. But there's a lot of norms in this case. I don't, to be honest, I don't even know if the energy graph takes the AC into account. I would assume it does, but I don't know that. There's a difference in time. The wind could have changed. There's a slight difference in temperature, a couple of degrees. That makes the air less dense, a little bit less drag for the down condition here. So, conclusion, I think you're pretty safe in saying you can put the windows down and not suffer too much in efficiency. Using it as a energy saving strategy, I don't think the data is there for that, but it certainly is interesting and not at all what I was expecting. You know what I think we ought to do? What should we do? 
you know, drag on a car consists of two major drag forces, rolling resistance, which couldn't care less about speed, and then aerodynamic drag, which involves the coefficient of drag, which I have already said was very low in this thing, a 0.23, and then that's multiplied by the frontal area of the car, and then your air density, and then your velocity, but it's the square of your velocity. So even though we did a test at 50, why don't we go do a test at 75? Because even though the velocity will only get 50%, the uh, drag, the aerodynamic drag portion will more than double. So that does make sense, because air resistance, like you said, just gets really intense at higher and higher speeds. It right? does, it does, it does. It's going to be a lot of fun going 75 with the windows down to one. Oh boy, okay. And even more fun trying to find a five mile stretch of the freeway where somebody doesn't cut in front of you or slow you down. Mm -hmm. That would never happen. That would never happen. Hey, don't forget to turn the AC off during the window down test. We would hate to have to redo that test because we forgot to do that. <laughs> So here are the results for the windows up first. And here's the results for the windows down. And here they are overlaid on each other. Realize this was at 75 miles an hour with the front windows all the way down. This is not what you do in real life. It was very uncomfortable. You'd probably have it at a quarter, maybe even a third. And the hit would be much less than the 2% that we're seeing here. So. In summary, it looks like at 50 miles an hour, you may actually get a little efficiency boost by rolling the windows down. At 75 miles an hour, it looks like a 2% hit. The bottom line is it looks like you can roll your windows down whenever you want and enjoy the ride without much hit and efficiency. That's a lot smaller than I thought it would have been. Yeah, honestly. especially at 75, you had the windows all the way down, and trust me, that is not comfortable at all with the windows down yeah. at 75. But I wanted to do a worst case scenario, so. You yeah. know, they probably took that, um, this into the designing process, knowing that people like to roll their windows down and try and have as minimal an impact on the drag of the car as possible if you did. I wonder if they did. I mean, because that really surprised me. I was not expecting it to be close at 50. I mean, because the way... Put, put your hand up, like You really don't feel any effect until you get right back here at the very back of the window. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. No, because I when you first... Uh, you know, I, I, I might actually have been the first one to pose this question. I thought, you know, you were bragging about how finely tuned, you know, a, a delicate instrument this is. Yeah. I thought doing something like rolling the windows down would throw everything out of balance. Yeah. Um, and cause, you know, some crazy uh, efficiency loss, but... But it's crazy how efficient thing, this thing is. I told you the Model S was the slickest car in the world. Mm -hmm. It has a .21 coefficient of drag. This has a .23. Hmm. If you look underneath, mm -hmm. the whole belly is sealed off. And Makes it, sense. The, the wheel wells are all sealed off has little air dams in the front to direct the air in specific positions. Those little frog lips in front uh -huh. create a high pressure area that makes the air bend the way they want it to before it hits the car. Yep. I mean, it's just really impressive. Do you like your spaceship, Dad? I like my spaceship. <laughs>